Hi guys, Sean here from StudyClicks, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Theorem 9. So in this theorem it states that in a parallelogram opposite sides and opposite angles are equal. So to first of all just explain this first sentence. A parallelogram is any four-sided quadrilateral that's convex in which the opposite sides from one another are parallel. And convex simply means that it's a closed shape, so in other words that uh, you know, if it's a quadrilateral that has four corners and it's closed, uh, such as this parallelogram we have here, which we're going to come on to in a moment. Now, the second sentence says conversely, and conversely just means that uh, the same thing is true, but in reverse. So it's basically dealing with the reverse implication. And the reverse in this case is that op if opposite sides and opposite angles of a convex quadrilateral are equal, then it is a parallelogram. So in other words, if you know that uh, you have a four-sided shape where the opposite angles are equal and the opposite sides are equal, then you know that the opposite sides are in fact parallel and it's a parallelogram. But in general, I think it's easiest to remember these kind of things if we just go straight into an example. So uh, this is an example of a parallelogram, uh, meaning that the opposite sides are parallel. So I'm just going to draw arrows to indicate that. And first of all, we're just going to deal with the opposite sides. So the opposite sides in this parallelogram are equal, meaning that because the top side is 10 centimeters long, so is the bottom side. And because the left side is 5 centimeters long, the right side is also 5 centimeters long. And that concludes it for dealing with our opposite sides. Now for the opposite angles, we actually only have uh, one angle here, which is this one on the bottom left, which is 115 degrees. Uh, but based on this bottom left angle, we can work out all the other angles in the parallelogram. And this is because the total number of degrees in any parallelogram is always 360. And uh, we're just going to start this off by dealing with the opposite angle from this angle, which is this angle up here in the top right. And because the one in the bottom left is 115 degrees, uh, this angle up here is also 115 degrees. And so that is the second easy angle dealt with. And all we know about these, uh, these uh, other two angles, excuse me, is that uh, they're equal. So we're just going to call both values of these x. And what we can do now is set up an equation because, as I said, we know there's 360 degrees total inside this parallelogram. So to do it step by step, we have one angle here, which is 115 degrees. We have another angle here, which is 115 degrees. And what we're going to add, is, add to these two angles is x and then another x. So we're going to add 2x. And we know that all of this added up is going to be 360 degrees. So first of all, what we're going to do is just add up the degrees on the left hand side. So we have 115 plus 115. And the answer for 115 plus 115 is 230. So now what we have is 230 degrees plus 2x is equal to 360 degrees. And now the last thing we're going to do or I suppose the second last thing technically is just take away 230 degrees from both sides. So we have 2x and that is going to be equal to, if we take out a calculator, 360 degrees minus 230 degrees, which is 130 degrees. And the very last thing to do to find the value of x is to divide across by 2. So because 2x is equal to 130 degrees, x is equal to 130 divided by 2. And our answer is that x is equal to 65 degrees. So that is how you find all the angles in a parallelogram given only one of the angles to begin with. And that covers it for our opposite sides and opposite angles being equal. And now to move on to corollary one. And uh, just in case you don't know what a corollary is, a corollary is simply a statement which follows on from a theorem. So based on the information we're given in a theorem, it's sometimes possible to state another piece of information. And this extra piece of information you can state is what's called a corollary. And this corollary based on theorem nine up here states that a diagonal divides a parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So if we had a parallelogram that looked like this and we drew a diagonal across the parallelogram, uh, what this theorem states is that the two triangles created are exactly the same. But just to explain a little bit more about congruent triangles as a bit of revision, congruent triangles is, is basically any two triangles which have the exact same sides and the exact same angles and the only way they differ is by their location. So for instance with these two triangles, they have the exact same angle at the top and that means that they have the exact same angles at the bottom as well because they're congruent. So uh, all of their angles are equal and all of their sides are equal as well. So in this case, uh, because they have basically the same orientation, although that's not always going to be true, uh, the, uh, the sides on the left are equal, the sides on the right are also equal, as well as the sides in the bottom. So I'm just drawing dashes through each of the sides there to indicate that you know, the sides with uh, one dash are equal, the sides with two dashes are equal, and so on. And that is it for a recap on congruent triangles. Uh, basically, congruent triangles are the exact same. So to go back to our corollary, uh, by drawing this diagonal through our parallelogram, we've created two congruent triangles. So uh, basically, because the opposite sides are equal, so we know the sides on the top and bottom are equal, 
the sides on the left and right are equal as well. These opposite angles in the top left and top right in this case are also equal. These two angles created by the diagonal um, are equal once again. And uh, the reason for this is because we have these two parallel lines on the top and bottom. And because our diagonal line is a, a transversal on these parallel lines, these angles, this one at the top and this one down here, are what are called alternate angles. And there's another theorem on the course about alternate angles. Uh, but all you need to know is that alternate angles are created when a transversal line crosses a parallel line. And uh, as you can see in our case, the angles are on either side of the diagonal line. And the same thing is true for the final two angles involved. Uh, these are also equal because of our congruent triangles or our triangles that are exactly the same. So that's a handy thing to know about parallelograms and that concludes it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.